Earth is our only example of life emerging anywhere in the universe. But what if life on Earth didn't start on Earth at all? There's one idea that life on Earth actually didn't get going here, but was delivered from space. Scientists call this theory panspermia. The idea of panspermia essentially talks about the transferal of life throughout the cosmos. We know asteroids and comets carry organic molecules, but could they carry life itself? What if life starts on one planet? Can it actually get itself to a nearby planet? Is it possible that meteorites could actually transport living beings? For life to travel around the cosmos, first, it needs to take flight. An asteroid is on a collision course with an inhabited planet. So what happens if there's a huge cataclysmic collision on a planet? Material is blasted off into space. The impact might kill life on the surface of that planet. But it's possible some bacteria might escape, hitching a ride on chunks of the planet's surface. A meteorite being ejected from a planet after an asteroid impact, I mean, that's not going to be an easy ride. But it turns out it's not as bad as you think. Some bacteria are very, very hard to kill. Some we even don't know how to kill. Even the impact that actually threw that rock into space. For bacteria, no problem. If those chunks of rock expelled during asteroid collisions could actually hold on to viable organisms, then it really could change the way in which we think about life spreading in the universe. If the microbes can survive takeoff, then they can start their journey to a new home. The odds of life conquering the universe seem to be getting better. The important question now is, how long could that life, those bacteria, those microorganisms inside that rock, survive the space environment? Exposure to UV radiation could be fatal, killing any life on the surface of an asteroid. But experts think that microbial passengers could still survive by hiding underground. It doesn't take much to shield a microorganism from UV. Just a little bit of rock and you have enough protection to just hold on throughout a journey uh, to the next body, to your next home. Eventually, they could arrive at an uninhabited world that's ready and waiting for life. But they're in for a bumpy landing with the rock burn up coming through a planet's atmosphere. It's in for a hot ride, but only for a few seconds and only the outer layers of that rock will blow off. And then it just falls and hits the ground, not that fast, a couple hundred miles an hour. If a human were in there, that would be bad, but for a bacterium, no big deal. The panspermia theory says life could start on just one planet, then spread to another planet, and possibly another. If we found alien life forms, would they look familiar? One of the biggest questions about finding other life in the solar system is how similar will it be to us? If it's just like us, it begs the question, did we have a common genesis? Did we originally come from another planet? One radical idea is that life on Earth came from Mars. Imagine Mars three and a half, four billion years ago. It was more Earth-like then than Earth was at that point. The Earth was still quite warm. Mars actually had cooled off faster, had a thick atmosphere, water. Life could have arisen there. Mars has been hit repeatedly by meteors, sending chunks of the planet flying off into space. And some of those chunks have landed here on Earth. So this is a really unusual meteorite. It was found near the city of Los Angeles, and uh, we actually know that it actually came from the planet Mars, and we know that because it has gases trapped inside it that have the exact same composition as the Martian atmosphere. There's been a lot of transit between meteor strikes hitting Mars and on Earth. There's a little bit of Mars on Earth. There's a little bit of Earth on Mars. It's possible that life started on Mars and was transferred to Earth inside of a meteorite. When you think about it, maybe we're the immigrants. 
we are the Martians. Life on Earth started on Mars and got transferred here. Panspermia could allow life to spread from planet to planet, conquering our solar system. But what about even greater distances? In 2017, the cigar-shaped space rock, Oumuamua, appeared in our solar system. It came from interstellar space, and experts think it could be carrying organic matter. One of the fascinating things about Oumuamua is it has sort of a reddened surface. Now, that could actually partially be from the presence of organic molecules. Could life survive interstellar or even intergalactic travel? Whether or not this is an easy way to transfer life around in the universe is still an open question. The possibility of transferring life from star system to star system seems a little bit remote. The immense distances and dangers of interstellar travel would be hard to survive. Some experts think there is one way for life to conquer the universe. But it won't be life as we know it. The universe is unimaginably large. Many experts believe there is life out there. We just have to go find it. One of the things I love about being a human is the fact that I'm born with this curiosity. This curiosity drives us to explore, explore Earth, explore our solar system, and beyond, into the galaxy, look for other life forms. But with current technology, it would take thousands of years just to reach the nearest star. It's unlikely humans will ever leave our galaxy. If life one day does spread from Earth into the cosmos, it's probably not just gonna be a bunch of meat bags like us, but other forms of life that are more suited for interstellar and intergalactic travel. Our fragile bodies are not suited to the distances and dangers of interstellar travel. Machine life may be more robust for traveling between planets and between stars than biological life. There are a lot of scientists who think that when we encounter aliens, we won't be encountering them, we'll be encountering their machines because we can build machines that can last a million years, go from one star to the next. It's much easier than transporting us fragile, gloppy bags of meat and so if we go out into space, we're more likely to find robots than we are biological life. For humanity to discover alien life, humanity itself may have to evolve from biological life to artificial life. What's really ironic here is that while we're figuring out the origin of life on Earth, we humans could be inventing a form of life on our own. And that is what we call artificial intelligence. The development of AI, self-replicating machines even, may very well be just the next key transition in our evolutionary history. Could a super-intelligent, self-replicating machine conquer the universe? Maybe this AI can fashion its own machines create factories to create resources, to replicate itself, create ships that will allow it to travel from one place in the universe to another. But would AI represent a new form of life? I think the answer is yes, and I think it actually goes on from there. I think artificial intelligence might be the next necessary stage in evolution. We made the computers, they are our children. I think of life as a process that can retain its complexity and reproduce. So bacteria are life, humans are life, and some future creation of advanced artificial intelligence that can do those things should also count as life.